is understanding yeah. what their side is and it helps you to know how to deal with them. Yeah. So, okay, very nice. Thank you. Any other things to share? One more. That's it? You guys were talking for so long. <laughs>
but it was a tremendous experience uh, how to work with small business to understand it more um, closely, to understand how to really love and believe in people, how to drive and manage the completely informally uh, to, to lead informally when you don't have any kind of position or leadership position, but you have to manage uh, thousands of people, you know, to drive them further. And uh, uh, it was also the seven category of the products. It was a huge logistics centers. It, uh, we uh, became 10th market in the world among 86 markets. So huge amount of uh, the revenue, huge amount of goods. And after that, so I decided that, yeah, but from another side, I'm more service oriented person and I return, go back to IT and now I'm in, in, in uh, IT. Uh, so from the point of uh, transformation business, I would like to say that I believe more <coughs> that, yes, I came from the, I try manufacturing because I think that uh, everybody has to understand what does it mean infrastructure, that all economy is based on the infrastructure and the infrastructure mainly are coming from the uh, really manufacturing things. So to understand how the manufacturing working, and uh, it was my dream was to be the chemical engineer, and uh, nobody believed that I will go to a chemical uh, engineering study because uh, it was 1992 when I graduated from the school, and my parents said, no, no, you cannot earn money in chemicals, so you have to go to <laughs> economics. So <laughs> then finally, when I go to MBA, so I understand how the chemical business is working. So I was on the factories of MBA, I see how the chemicals doing their business. Then logistics, it's a huge, you know, transportation scheme. That's a chain which is connecting different kind of uh, manufacturing, servicing business, everything together, and how all of that is driving. And that's, a, that's a, you know, the driver of all kind of the, um, products which you are producing and finally you go to the services because services that's a um, key enabler of the economy and for me of course they uh, find uh, the end user uh, front desk that's uh, for me definitely the services type business and uh, just to finalize what I would like to say at the end that uh, yes uh, at the end uh, marketing and positioning that's a um, starting point and end point of your visioning and if you understand better what your customers would like to get from you as the company as the final goods you have to create vision and the first mm, statement of that vision you will have that in the positioning of your company and to generate that positioning you have to be a very strong manager you have to lead operational excellence in any kind of your company is it manufacturing logistics or servicing company and just to say what kind of the uh, recipients from uh, uh, the success uh, based on the all kind of my colleagues, uh, the uh, um, friends who is also uh, achieving some kind of the results. So we as the mathematical and engineering type of people, so we uh, uh, like to use that, you know, IQ type uh, language and uh, we name that, you know, that it's connecting a different kind of Q. So first of all, it's a formal intellect. So then it's operational intellect, so that's a question of sustainability, you know, focusing on sustainability. MQ, motivational in intellect, so do can you have uh, generate energy by yourself? Can you be the, you know, the uh, like a lighter inside your team? Uh, nevertheless, even if it is very tough, even if it's you are very tired, so you have to generate that energy to motivate others. PQ, so it's a uh, people intellect, so how you can manage yourself, even if you are very, very angry, but still so to, to collect yourself and sometimes to calculate until 10 and say, 10, okay, <laughs> later. <laughs> and then uh, LQ, that's a possibility to constantly learning. So even if you think that, okay, five education you have and that's a finally, final education, it's never final. So it's just <laughs> the next. And uh, the, um, my point, what I can say that uh, from my point of view, the force, my success of for uh, my factors of success, I would like to say, first of all, uh, it's a visioning um, until you can visualize your idea or your goal, until you can see who you are, how it looks like your team, your company, so you, you cannot understand where you are driving for. Second, it's of course to find the dynamic uh, area. 
if you feel that you are working in certain area, industry, I don't know, function, uh, department, which is struggling on constant, you know, cutting of people, you know, not important uh, functions, tasks, responsibilities, you are not in the right plate, not in the right place, with not right uh, positioning and others. So you have to find another dynamic area. And fourth, it's to start learn how to say no. As, as more higher on the position you are, the more tougher your answer no is. And it's a really, really critical point because more and more people come to you with a lot of requests, with a lot of help, with a lot of, you know, suggestions, so on, and you have to understand, is it right choice now or you have to really say no and go to another way. That's a short message from my side, so <laughs> it's a short Thank presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So please have a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I'm you. sure you must be tired. <laughs> No, it was a long day, but uh, it's an interesting story, just a very short. Uh, yesterday we had the, uh, we signed the contract with the Zaporozhye Melia, and uh, you know, uh, it's interesting situation with all kind of political aspects, what we have, you know, that Zaporizhia is uh, very close to the Ato region, and of course not a lot of, um, correctly say, almost no foreign investors would like to go to that area. From another side, it's a huge city. It's uh, uh, around 600,000 people are living there. And it's uh, three big factories are working there. So and a lot of demand for small businesses. But that people doesn't have a habit to work in small businesses, you know. And to talk about the IT, with the IT community, with small business there. So, you know, just to give them the belief and visioning and how to drive further their city, it was so emotionally mm -hmm. yesterday. And finally morning, so when we finally said okay so we have a dream so <laughs> we put a plan and now i have to go back to my work in kiev and then the airplane doesn't <laughs> fly <laughs> <laughs> guys said wow first we have to improve our airplanes and everything <laughs> with our you know, airport so that's a uh, first priority now for the city wow. <laughs> that actually brings me to one of the questions we were talking about with uh with rania's book that she she writes that it doesn't matter what position you are in, you can lead from any position. So it sort of relates to, you know, if you're not a big corporation, that doesn't mean you can't um, succeed in business. So what would you say um, to people uh, who aren't in CEO positions like you, but who want to lead and how they could do that? Um, um, good point. So first of all, I would like just to come a little bit to the uh, um, book of Rania about that, uh, first of all, uh, that's uh, self-confidence um, in any kind of person. It's not depends are you woman or are you man, but uh, uh, with women in our society is a little bit worse because we have a different culture in, in, in our society that woman has to be the second line and uh, so she is constantly not self-confident in herself and uh, it's a very interesting statistics that uh, when the uh, man get a uh, position, the new position like a CEO, he's an average prepare on the 65%, 63, 65%. But when uh, anybody asks him about, are you ready to uh, fulfill that position? And he said, yes, definitely. Yeah. And uh, regarding ladies, so they are ready on 130%. But if somebody asks them, are you la ready to fulfill the position? She said, no. <laughs> I still need to learn. <laughs> you know? So the first point is to be confident and uh, to be self-confident. Even 80% uh, around you say, no, you, you, you cannot survive and that's not your position. So bef before that, you have to really understand what is your way. So from, from, from my point of view, uh, I worked 10 years on different managers management positions and I changed a lot of countries. Even 10 years ago, I would like to go to CEO position. And uh, I, it was a lot of discussion around me with my friends, with my parents, with everybody around who said, no, 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 you don't need that position. Mm -hmm. So it's tough, it's for men, it's, it's, you don't need it, and so on. And um, my father, he said very nice uh, words. So in our society, if you would like to go to the men's position, you have to be uh, ready for the box. So and then you don't uh, need to expect that somebody, if you go there, will perceive you as a woman. So you have to be ready to fight. 
Mm -hmm. And um, that's a very similar to the feminism direction because, you know, sometimes ladies said we would like to get the right uh, mm -hmm. to go to the feminism, but at the same time we would like that men will open in front of us doors. But that's mm -hmm. not a feminism, you know. <laughs> so that's uh, any kind of value will give you responsibility. So that's why to, to shortage in my answer that first of all to have uh, self-confidence, then to believe in yourself and to understand that it's definitely your way and you know that the strength point which you have internally, that's a definitely the uh, factors which is driving you to your vision. That's a point. Yeah. And what would you say was your m most pivotal moment in your own career path? Um, um, probably, uh, so interesting point that the critical decision probably we are making when uh, something going and we are uh, destroying the bridge behind us. So I would not go very deeply uh, just to, it would be very long story, but uh, if you'd like really to fly or then you have to take away all stones on your foot. If you would like to uh, pass the bridge and to fighting with all kinds of obstacles on another bench of the river, but uh, and without any possibility to go back, so then you have to destroy the bridge behind on you. And probably that's for me was the only the issue. Because mm -hmm. constantly, you know, especially your uh, people who are around you, um, the uh, people who is usually your, I don't like to say friends, so probably uh, uh, aroundings, yes, the people who is usually in your society. So it is not very comfortable for them when you are flying when you are driving up, when you are creating a career, because in that case they have to change themselves together with you, if they would like to follow you. And the question is that uh, f when you do this step in or step up, you have to make a decision, would you like to go with these people further? And then you have to make a decision, okay, I'm checking them and they will go with me, or if these people are very, very important for me, so I'm ready to drive them too. Not only me, but also these people. Like we are driving our children, even if they are very, very tough and uh, if they are not so <laughs> successful, so we are driving them. So that's why I would like to say probably the crucial moment in my life, that's when I decided that no, there's no way back, even if it, is, it, it will be very tough. And second amount, my um, round of my uh, circle of friends and uh, people who I know, I decided, okay, probably these people will not go with me. So I, I don't have a force to drive them together with me. But for these people, couple of people, yes, I will spend the time and I will do my job and I will drive them together with me. So then I will have really, that decision has to be done before you are going up. Otherwise, so these people will go you back very easy, even if you broke in the bridge behind of you. So that's why openly to say that uh, uh, you have to make a decision, you have to make a decision that you will not go back and you have to decide who will be in your boat and then be ready to support not only you but also uh, the people in your boat. And so how do you uh, maintain that motivation and inspiration for you and the people in that boat when there are obstacles or setbacks and things like that? Uh, oh, that's a very, very uh, interesting question because uh, um, from, from my point of view, the motivation has to be uh, in, in the promises which you openly say to others or uh, if in your promises, other people. Mm -hmm. So when your vision is uh, bigger than your life and when your dream is behind of uh, your small comfortable zone which you are today in that case so first of all okay i have a vision i have a dream and i sit with that dream you know uh, like yesterday i had a interesting discussion with a couple of small business in zaporizhia yes and i said what is your dream they said ah i would like to increase 10 percent my revenue i said uh, and i said how you would like to do that and uh, the, the man answered I just would like to uh, sell my services to um, provide uh, websites to the business, but they don't like to buy. And I said, what you are saying to them when you are buying their website? And he said, that I can do it very efficiently. I said, okay, but why you think that they have to buy your website? 
because currently it's a digital society. I said, good, but why they need to take that website? What for? And you know, that guy never think about that. And I said, <laughs> if you will think that, okay, they have to sell their products not only in Zaporizhia, but also national wide in Ukraine or outside of Ukraine, definitely what they need because they don't have roads, simple roads, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some kind of distribution and logistic system, which today is internet. And he'll just looking on me like first time he's thinking about that idea, you know. <laughs> but that's a, a point that if you would like to dream, if you would like to dream about your business, you have to dream also about your client business, about the people who is managing your business. So it's a state-owned enterprise, a state, a state um, sorry, a stakeholders, all kind of kind of uh, stakeholders who is involved in your business. And in that case, your dream has to involve also th their dreams. So when you officially announcement your dream, you already put on the table your promise. And a lot of people heard that promise. So in a couple of weeks, they start coming to you and said, how's about your dream? What do you plan about that? So <laughs> what did you already do? So we are ready to help you with that. Mm -hmm. So where we have to go? So what kind of resources you need? And you already sit and think, why I said it? <laughs> so <laughs> now I have to do it definitely. <laughs> so that's a one kind of recipe. The second recipe is, of course, to, to choose in your board uh, right people. Because what I said previously about say no, <coughs> I, I wasn't so successful a leader from their first step as, as, as all the leaders, as all of their success people, because it was a lot of drops, it was a lot of mistakes. And I would like to say from my point of view, it, 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 some of course mistakes because of me, but uh, the second uh, problem was that uh, wrong people with me. So I trust to people a lot, or I believe that uh, I didn't check that people, I didn't check the values. Very important that when we start driving in that boat, that values are common. People cannot be trained so well. People can be completely different from their characteristics point of view, from the personality point of view, but you have to have a common values. So then in the tough situation, you can understand each other very, very quickly and very uh, rightly, and it will be supportive, mm. uh, Adrian. That's probably the two mm -hmm. critical points, which I understand within the couple of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say you're most proud of as a leader? Mm, um, or what you know you did that you, mm -hmm. you're most proud of in your leadership journey? Uh, probably uh, number one point is not uh, my personal success, but uh, the uh, success of uh, people who was with me in, in one team, who was my subordinates. For example, in Kyivstar, um, um, so I was the m p person who is building the first marketing, so I was this like a 42nd person in Kyivstar. I came there one month before commercial start, and uh, we started building uh, marketing department. And currently, all five uh, people who was uh, at that period of time only sitting in the marketing department, one of them, uh, um, she is now the uh, marketing director in uh, UK, and she's responsible for Amazon sales within all kinds of UK, Ireland, so the Iceland and others. So the uh, another guy, he is currently uh, the uh, VP, uh, one of the VP, vi vice president in Ukra Telecom. The third guy, he is currently working in France. Uh, the fourth, uh, he's uh, HR director in uh, Scandinavia and one when a b in very big uh, company. So, and you know, the point when we all starting uh, started and uh, when you learn together and when you uh, just demonstrate some activity and later on drive together with people their growth, I mm. think that's uh, the most uh, um, proudness, the most proud factors which I probably um, um, had no experience within all my, um, all, all my journey. Um, my personal achievement uh, usually is also, uh, so any kind of personal achievement you have to experience within certain kind of celebration and the period of life when you can feel that, you know, achievement. And when you have uh, some kind of individual result, so it is like a mo it's just a moment. So you so struggling to go to that result and then finally, okay, you get, you are on the top of mountain mm -hmm. and you are alone. 
<laughs> are you dreaming about that alone two seconds or even one hour to stay on the top of the mountain no you would like to celebrate with all your friends with your family you know you would like to song there something dance or something like that you know and you would like to uh, to live within that experience quite long period of time not just a couple of moments mm -hmm. so that's why uh, when we are succeeding when we are looking on success of your people of your team it's a very long long period when you experience your satisfaction so that's a really achievement which mm -hmm. you can uh, feel within certain period of time so that's why um, of course the proudness of people who uh, who was leading by you so the companies who is currently the uh, top companies in Ukraine or top companies in other countries, the management who is currently the owners of some other companies. So and they was uh, in your team and I know where we help them. The brands who is very uh, um, now respected, you know, and uh, social responsible. So that's probably the most proud. Seeing those successes continue on. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is your greatest leadership challenge that you are currently facing or maybe have faced in the past? Um, yeah, the, um, I would like to split it on two parts because uh, the, the challenge is uh, what we experience within period when Ukraine grow. And currently with the all kind of obstacles what we had after revolution is completely different story. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say that the challenges which we had before um, revolution mainly was uh, in uh, um, you know trust of the people uh, that uh, okay the woman can achieve something and that um, you can uh, really be on one line with the other managers in the position and you just uh, have to demonstrate your professionalism because before that a relationship was much was was were much more important than really professional factors so in that case it's very tough to compete when you mm -hmm. are driving your education mainly and some people are driving relationship mainly so it's mm -hmm. a very different competition i would like to say so uh, that's why I would like to say the challenge for me uh, before I became on the position of CEO was uh, mainly that uh, I tried to demonstrate usually only professional point and for me the glass, glass, po uh, glass uh, ceiling was about uh, to understand that relationship is also matter. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's a critical point why I didn't manage the uh, first position in the companies. And at that period of time, you know, when the uh, journalists like that question, um, so do you think that the woman cannot achieve their first position in the company? I said, yes, because it's a glass ceiling, because the men are dominating, so on. But later on, when I already achieved that position, not only one time, but several times already, then I openly can say now that no, I wasn't ready for that position for that period of time, because I didn't understand that for me, it was not very mature perception. What is the position for that period of time in Ukraine has to be? Has what kind of you know requirement was uh, nec were necessary for that period of time? And the priority number one was relationship. Number two, flexibility, and number three only education and professionalism. Mm -hmm. You know, and th that has to be the uh, the maturity level of the manager to understand where your strong point, s where your strengths, and where your weaknesses to work with that to develop that further. So um, currently, I would like to say that the challenge is completely different because uh, um, majority of business in Ukraine would like to now focus, squeeze their business already, squeeze their business, and they just uh, focusing on surviving. So they just would like to, you know, to minimize business and survive whatever they can do. They are not thinking that in any crisis, in any situation like we have, there are a lot of points of opportunity, a lot of issues which you can be focused and developed in completely different way your business. That's a problem what the Ukrainian business are struggling on. And international business know about that. So international business usually uh, you can see that new uh, venture funds are coming. So the new investors coming because they understand, yes, that's a huge risk to work there, but also big profit can be there. And for Ukraine currently we have a very big uh, possibility because uh, the all countries are struggling. Yes, we are struggling with the war, but all countries are struggling with political instability, migration, economical crisis. And we have a habit already to fight with all these crises. We know how to manage that crisis. They don't. 
the Americans, they now are looking on Ukrainians and say that, okay, we have to educate, we have probably to learn something from that nation because they are somehow surviving and their economy are growing <laughs> within their <laughs> military aggression. We don't understand how it's going on. <laughs> so that's an uh, interesting point. So and we have to learn from that where the opportunity really to, to grow and to jump into that and not just to squeeze the business, but probably to take some small portion of the business, try new, then another portion of the business. So to test something, then another portion of business pilot something, probably yeah. partnership with completely unusual partners or something like that. So and for me, current challenge is really uh, to convince our partners to drive the business, to find the new partners and to really develop the ecosystem, to go to uh, other regions of Ukraine and say, guys, yes, tough. Yes, people are strange. Yes, <laughs> politicals are very, very awful. <laughs> but <laughs> what you personally are ready to do? Because we also are sitting and waiting when somebody is bringing us something. So, And the, the challenge is really to restart that whole uh, engine mm -hmm. in Ukraine because we as a Microsoft are interested in a very dynamic ecosystem. And for mm -hmm. us, the ecosystem is everything. It's all stakeholders, starting from government, finishing by each family. And that's why we are so strange. We are coming to mayor. He said, why you are so interested in politics? I said, I'm completely not interested in politics. By time, I'm interested in your productivity, in your efficiency, <laughs> because Microsoft is working in productivity. Mm -hmm. So and that's a connection. That's all. I'm not mm -hmm. interested in politics. So that's why the challenges is mainly depends on the uh, overall situation. But uh, your visioning in that period of time has to be wider, as I said, compared to what the majority of companies, majority of people are thinking about the priority mm -hmm. today. And Arania said that you had mentioned to her something about this period of time is very unique opportunity for women in business leadership. Could you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, we um, discussed very interesting point, uh, uh, very interesting example actually with support in uh, Ivano-Frankivsk in Ternopol, very interesting uh, um, cooperative, coop, co I don't know, union of ladies um, whose men uh, uh, just uh, was called to army. So the men's called to army, the, uh, the ladies are staying at home. And uh, the problem is that they have to manage family. They have to, uh, you know, how somehow to work with children and somehow to host all the big kind of um, matters and issues which they still with them. And they understand that to do it by themselves, it's impossible. And uh, we just propose to them platform where they can uh, know about each other. And then some kind of initiative group already proposed the following that, OK, each of us can put some kind of money and uh, just say what I can do, um, what is my talent, what is my strength point. For example, I can do, I don't know, Vichelanka, um, or I can do some kind of, I don't know, basket, or I can do something else. Uh, but I don't know where to get the material, for example, or I don't have some kind of other uh, issues or resources what I have. And another lady, she said, OK, I know where to bring that resources, but I don't, com I don't have completely the talent uh, how to do that. Mm -hmm. So and each of them uh, say, OK, but we would like that that all enterprises would be our own enterprises, but with the, a lot of stakeholders. So currently, it is a union with a lot of stakeholders. Currently, it's uh, more than 60 uh, stakeholders. Each of them brought like somebody 100 grivna, somebody 1,000 grivna, and so on. Depends on their amount. Currently, they have a stake in all this union. And we help them you know, to promote themselves outside of their region. And when we, uh, with help of a Canadian embassy, with help of American embassy, to help them to sell their final product to Canada, mm -hmm. so they immediately increase four times their revenue. You know, and mm -hmm. when now guys are calling them and say, how you send to us on the Easter so uh, expensive, you know, uh, new um, jackets and everything for to to army. So they said, ah, we already the entrepreneurs. <laughs> 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 and you know, that's an example of when you know the lady understand that yes, they have a challenge, and unfortunately, they don't have any other opportunity how to improve that. The possibility to sit together, to you know, unite together and think about how to do together better to make a partnership about that, that's driving in new ideas. And after that, new ideas, we add technology, they mm -hmm. add relationship, and finally, it's, it's a very interesting business. Create new connections. <laughs> yes, yes, that's uh, what we discussed with Ryan. So never, never, never give up.
everything you can find a way. You can find a way, even don't even even not you, neighbor, even not neighbor, friends, not friends, friends from that area, from another area. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Rani had said that something about business leadership is about strategic thinking and making connections between ideas and people, those connections that other people aren't seeing now. So that's a really good example of how that all came together. Um, could you, you mentioned before that earlier you realized looking back you weren't ready for a uh, CEO position. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us what do you look for when you're evaluating whether someone whether or not someone else is ready for leadership? Um, <coughs> um, you know, when before I came to the position of CEO, I uh, wrote uh, interesting study from Garvard Business uh, Review. Mm -hmm. uh, Garvard make an evaluation and comparison a leadership style of women and men. Uh, if anybody read that, probably somebody uh, read that story. And it was a comparison about different competence and style. And you know, they said the summary was that among uh, 11 crucial um, competence which CEO has to uh, demonstrate, only in one we have a difference between women and men uh, leadership. Do you know what is it? Any guess? Just emotional, emotional expression? No, emotional intellect? No. <laughs> Anything else? I also expect that emotional I I and well, intellect because <laughs> it seems that men cannot feel, but uh, that <laughs> depends on the level, <laughs> values, and conditions. That's a different. <laughs> Another point? Management style? No. That's a yes, this is a four different styles. As a high risk UI, so you have to demonstrate different. Risk management. Risk management, challenges, and uh, yes, uh, ch change management. No, dif but that's the same. They say that uh, women better in multitasking? Uh, yes, it's an uh, interesting point about multitasking because <laughs> last uh, two years uh, there is, if you know, the, um, also research which said that multitasking doesn't exist. You know, <laughs> it's, it's another research about it. <laughs> yeah, but it, knows what knows, uh, it is not the case. But the case was that women cannot demonstrate visioning so nice as men can. So it means that Women are better in operational task. Women are better in focusing on some kind of, you know, excellence, sales excellence, operational excellence, something like excellence. They can do very high quality job, especially with the focus job. But what the woman can not do very perfectly, communicate visioning. Interesting mm. point was about communicate visioning. They're not saying that women cannot do the visioning. Probably they can dream. <laughs> Guess from <laughs> Garvard <laughs> Business Press. Yeah, but we, c we cannot communicate. And you know, uh, even if I read that story, it was my first mistake when I became uh, when I became the CEO. First three months, I remember about that. After six months, I forget about it. <laughs> That's uh, because what the woman said. Okay, uh, finally I get the position CEO. And as you average woman, I said, okay, probably. Uh, it is not my position. I just 65% ready for that. I have to demonstrate that I'm ready for 100%. What I have to do? Excellence. I have to demonstrate the quality of my job. And I start to do all kind of functions. I have to read all my four educations. I have mm -hmm. to demonstrate that. I have to drive into each project, sitting with each uh, head of my team and uh, say, I have to learn how you do this job. Could you imagine when the it's uh, we have a team of 800 people, you know, and when I sit in close to head of store, uh, the warehouse, and there's a huge amount of, uh, you know, guys who I never met in my life, you workers, you know, hard workers from villages. And I said, I would like to understand how they drive all these, you know, <laughs> packages and packs everything and staying close to them. And I said to, to the head of warehouse, can you bring out this CEO? Because we, we cannot work this very well. It's, just, it's impossible. Constant control and monitor. So, but that's a, that's a joke part of that. But you know, what I'm losing for? Because my job and my role, it's not working instead of my team. My job and my work is not working instead of each workers. My job and my work is to motivate people, is to develop the company, is to demonstrate the vision and to drive the company to that vision. 
It is completely different role for, from all role of functional directors. And sometimes, you know, the first leader of the company, they forget about it. They start copying what they understand to do. So what they previously did is the VP of some function, of mm -hmm. the manager of some department. So, and of course, I almost lost my job. So because in three months, in three, uh, in, in uh, one and three, one year and three months, one guy is coming who is constantly demonstrate visioning, which we discussing within coffee, but I didn't man said that I didn't have a time to demonstrate that or to uh, announce that in front of my uh, management. But mm -hmm. he did. Until mm -hmm. I, I driving all business on warehouse, he is sitting in Munich with a uh, beer of uh, VP of our company and a very nice um, announcing about all kind of visioning which we discussed yesterday within the coffee mm -hmm. time. So after that, I understand that no, we have to understand that the the we have to not only to to go on the position, but understand our own roles, our own job, and you know to do this job properly. To to um, so another point of view, I would like to also man mentioning within that period of time, a very nice book. Uh, uh, first uh, 100, 100 days on new position. I don't remember the author. I didn't bring with me, sorry. I probably later on can through the Facebook to communicate mm -hmm. about this book. That's a very interesting book for any kind of leader who would like to go to the next uh, level, to next position. Because uh, this is a, like a, a great, um, um, I would say the mentor's step-by-step uh, -step recommendation, what you have to do on the new position within first 90 days. First 90 days, that's the name of the book. Mm -hmm. First 90 days. And that's everything about visioning, about set up a communication <coughs> top line, set up communication downside, set up communication with your colleagues to demonstrate on certain level your competences mm -hmm. and how you have to plan for the, uh, the first plan for your visioning. And really, before going to that position, I strongly recommend to read this book and to do the plan based on that book. Because really, for all my next positions, I rewrite, reread that book constantly. And all time, I find something new. And really, that's a very valuable, very valuable suggestion. Great. Great. Thanks. So I won't ask you what's the best business book to read. <laughs> 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 um, no, just uh, um, depends on your style. Um, of course, we have to, to read a lot and constantly. And uh, when the leader stop reading, uh, for all team, it's um, um, uh, two critical uh, moment of truth. First, uh, your leader are not so intelligent because something uh, he or she is uh, read somewhere summary of the book, but don't read book mm -hmm. by themselves. And another um, truth for, for your team is that, uh, okay, uh, where, this, uh, where our leader can bring new uh, motivational speech mm -hmm. ideas for us. So if you are not reading, so you're just uh, copying populistic you know, messages, and of course that's not a, uh, there are no background behind on that messages. So for uh, true leaders, so you need to be very grateful. So you need to stay with all your messages based on some kind of theory, some kind of your truth and belief. So before that, of course, you need to read some books. And I would recommend, uh, depends on, uh, um, of course, what you prefer or what is your visioning. But first of all, it's uh, Kobe, of course, for the seven habits of successful mm -hmm. people because so each time when the people read it listen that book so I think that if everybody understand where I can improve something in my love uh, life or in my relationship or others um, of course so that's uh, a lot direction with depends on your business or so about entrepreneurship any kind currently it's of course uh, uh, about Tesla or about the uh, supervision institution or some kind of um, singular university or something like that to understand where is the critical trends, where the economy is going there. And the third direction, of course, that's uh, something about the um, uh, last uh, know-how with the motivation, with the pe people education, with new generation, how they are accepting knowledge and how they are working the teams. So something like that. So the, the critical list of the books, of course, from the practical things, uh, if you would like to be the leader, I would recommend, you know, that the How to Lead book, so the, uh, the um, book about the first uh, 90 days for the new positions. Of course, that's uh, something about uh, 
they, they lost what uh, just uh, okay I, I will remember yes I will say a little bit later there's a lot of uh, leadership literature out there that different categories of leadership, different styles and approaches. How would you describe your own personal style or approach to leadership? Um, um, I would like to say that, uh, unfortunately, I already under the um, cultural uh, breakage or broken by the uh, Microsoft culture <laughs> because we are trained by our internal trainers. And we have a very interesting course which uh, has a name situational leadership, yes? And uh, situational leadership um, train the leaders of Microsoft to um, apply four different styles depends on the development of your employee. Yes, so you are starting from the uh, uh, just the um, coaching style when you say, okay, look at me and just repeat what I'm doing. Second style, it's like a, uh, when demonstrate to me what you can do and I'm controlling you or your KPIs. Uh, so I just if you don't understand something so I can train and teach and so on so you're working as the um, a little bit as a mentor so the third li uh, leadership style it's motivational for me it's my comfortable zone so for mm -hmm. me the third level is <laughs> where <laughs> I, I feel myself very very comfortable it is when the people uh, very intelligent so they train a lot but sometimes they have a very lack of energy especially when something happened in the country or where um, they lost something in the, or their project not very successful or they lost people because people are just people constantly leaving not because you are bad because they have a completely different you know way in their life and people usually upset of that and you know for for them to drive their idea further uh, somebody has to stay close to them believe in them trust to them not take the project from them and say, now I will demonstrate to you how to do that <laughs> in a proper way. No, 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 no. Because in that case, you demonstrate to the people completely distrust and they completely lost self-confidence. So they will start, they will drop down to the first initial position and they will start in from the beginning. But to maintain them on the level which uh, you are currently meet them, so you need to trust to them, believe in them, and demonstrate to motivate them to drive further. Yes, probably that plateau will be a little bit long than you are expecting, but after that they will not starting from the minus two. They will start from zero and go further. So that's a type of um, it's a, a little bit difficult type of leadership, but uh, uh, I believe in that very much, and I, I, mm, I strongly believe that that's uh, one of the key which currently Ukraine is struggling on. And fourth, that's a, a completely uh, intelligent type of management where project based, where you have a lot of intelligent people around of you who don't like it, who don't uh, you know even don't like they don't accept any kind of uh, management on them you know and uh, any kind of administrative style on them so they just generate generate ideas come to you and say do you think my idea about that that would be nice and you have to say okay so would you like to discuss with me this idea or you just to need to support you from the motivational point of view no now just to believe in me okay i believe in you they go and do. <laughs> or sometimes they came and said, uh, from the technological point of view, can we sit and suggest? I said, okay, even I don't understand completely what they're talking about. And I said, okay, can you draw? And they start drawing and drawing <laughs> and you're just asking questions, you know, some coaching questions. And then people find it. You help me to understand so big uh, problem or issues in my project. And you say, great, super. But <laughs> this is your achievement. It's not mine. It's your achievement. And then people is flying because they finally are very motivated to go for the so that's a final, so project base. When you adding something to their project, they adding something to the project, but that's uh, it's a very, you know, how to say, it's more type of scrum or a new uh, way of, uh, um, say, structure of organization. Uh, and the, uh, the good leader has to uh, utilize all four type of leadership because sometimes you have a newcomers to your team, sometimes you have a people with very uh, high level of education, but they completely don't understand your business and how you can manage them. So from one side, sometimes if you are talking about the project management administration um, approach, you have to manage them from the fourth level of uh, fourth style of management, project based. But when they are talking about your industry type of business, so of course you have to manage them from the first 
like a coaching type of uh, leadership style. So uh, Microsoft probably dem helped me to understand better through the field um, mm -hmm. how to uh, um, better apply that different um, situational leadership style in different uh, way in different businesses. And uh, now we, um, our even our top management constantly we check in if we are utilizing all kind of or we experience all kind of uh, leadership style and uh, not uh, feeling our comfortable in one our mm -hmm. loveliest style. Mm -hmm. So that's of course different uh, styles you have to approach depends on the people depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you. So I know our. Uh, our audience today, our uh, participants all have questions as well. Uh, we were discussing before you arrived all the things we want to learn tonight. So I'd like to open it up if anyone has a question. Uh, Nastya is here with the, the microphone. So just make sure that you speak into the microphone so that the translator can also um, pick up what you're saying. Um, so we have our first question here. Hi, my name is Anya. I'm really glad that I finally uh, had a chance to be at your lecture. And I have two questions. The first, uh, you were saying about self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is how to strengthen this self-confidence. So do you need some people, other people say, okay, Nadia, you can, you will do it. Mm -hmm. Or how, how do you do to be self-confident all of the time because usually when you are like uh, when you have some fails or something it's difficult to stay in in, mm -hmm. in, in, in really self-confident uh, uh, mood uh, this is the first question and the second question you were saying a lot of about vision and the, your positioning and the, you said that like tw 20 years ago you, w you you knew that you're going to be CEO so uh, how have you decided that CEO is what you really need? And I know that you have a lot of uh, education and like in different field, sp uh, spheres. Uh, why have you chosen this specific sphere to be CEO? And how many years did it take for you to choose this sphere? Thank you. Okay, it's uh, three questions. Uh, I try to be short, but very uh, thank you very much for that question because you know, for especially for ladies, I think that uh, full 100% self-confidence, uh, even if the lady will sit here and say to you that I'm fully self-confident, don't believe in that. <laughs> so <laughs> we are constantly self-confident because even the strongest CEO, uh, I just had a meeting one month ago in New York, was the CEO, a uh, woman CEO in the world, was the top fortune companies. I talked to them and they all asking me, I'm a, a normal mom that my son is saying something and I, I just see uh, uh, at, at that lady and think about we just one week ago discussed with the local Ukrainian CEO that they are bad moms. <laughs> the similar <laughs> discussion in New York, similar topic. <laughs> you know, that's a one topic and just for, for the joke. But uh, shortly, self-confident, uh, uh, my personal uh, story is that uh, if I feel myself not very self-confident, so what I do? I try to, first of all, find my hobby where I fully myself 100% confident. For example, um, ice skating. So I started from uh, four years old. Even if I lost when my uh, son was very uh, like uh, three to four years old, then when he mm, was around six, seven, so I restarted uh, ice skating. And now I'm pretty uh, great in ice skating, you know. And when he said at me, looking at me and asked me, Mom, so it seems that you start training when I was six. And you so well <laughs> in ice skating. <laughs> so because it's within his experience, you know, he know that. So, uh, but coming back, uh, if you are uh, fully engaged in your uh, hobby, so then it can be return you back where you feel yourself very comfortable because you love it, because you even can demonstrate and talk about your hobby with any kind of people. You can share that knowledge and so on. So first of all, you coming back to the base where you feel your 100% confidence. Then when you go to next sphere where completely new for you, of course, you will not be 100% confidence, but there is a sphere where other ladies or other people similar to you will be 100% confidence because for them it's a hobby. And if you find that people as not the friends, but probably the people as the, your new community where you can in a friendly 
uh, you know, area when in a friendly time to discuss with them about, I would like to learn from you. So can you share how you do it in a very nice uh, way? And especially about, uh, like we would like to say about uh, mm, life hacks. I don't like to study from beginning seven years in musical schools. I would like within a couple of lessons somehow to, to play in piano. Could you give me a life hacks? And if this is a professional who is really passionate on that hobby, who is really very 100% comfortable in the hobby, definitely this person have a life hacks in that hobby. And then they start sharing that because they are happy when anybody asking about that hobby. So that's why create the surrounding, create the, um, the new round of people, constantly new round of people who is 100% confidence in that. So how I understand that I would like to be the CEO, um, CEO it's uh, not, uh, you know, to, First of all, of course, I was a very ambitious uh, person because uh, it depends very much coming from my parents and from my father, uh, from uh, I'm my family from the father's side. It's uh, constantly like eight generation was the military people. So and of course they are when I was the first uh, lady and it, you know, eight generations of the people. So what to do with me? So all previous was the generals and others and suddenly lady. <laughs> so, and uh, then for my father it was a challenge, <laughs> so he said, okay, probably it's uh, some, okay, mathematics, physics, then politicians that probably diplomats and something like that, mm -hmm. but something strong. So mm -hmm. that was the dream of my father. And of course I was pushed a lot by a lot of studying, a lot of learnings, a lot of lessons, a lot of courses. And uh, the dream of my family was that uh, I will be the diplomat. So and that was a dream that I will go to Mimo for that period of time. It was not a Kimo interesting, it was a Mimo. Everybody would like to go out. And um, so at the end, uh, of course, first my uh, mm, step in into the, to go to the big area, it was my parents. But after that, I start to understand, okay, I, I go to, I went to US when I was 14 and uh, it was in 1991 in the uh, USSR, it was USSR and when I go back USSR destroyed. So in Ukraine it was, any, uh, so it was even not a dress or some kind of, you know, clothes. It was no meal at all, just for mm -hmm. you to understand. Uh, it was matches and I would not, wouldn't like to discuss a lot about that. But when I came to US, so I saw so many, you know, nice closure, nice, you know, meal, different kind of, one had different uh, cheeses type and so on. For us, it was amazing. And then I understand, okay, I would like to be the head of big business, you know, to manage to generate all these products, you know, and <laughs> that <laughs> was my dream when I was 14, <laughs> you know. So that's when I go back uh, and uh, um, to, to USSR for me was, and the USSR was destroyed. So for that period of time, all of us, all of us when we was just uh, school matters so all of us dreams about entrepreneurship so and we would like to be the head of some big business so the head of some big corporation something like that but within 10 years or 15 years of my way to the position of CEO I understand that CEO it's mainly not about entrepreneurship CEO it is not about the managing of big business and CEO it is not even about big salary no that's a toughest job from the mentally point of view to lead the people. So the cr crucial function of the CEO is to lead the people. It is the constantly, it, you have not just respect the people, you have to love people. Because all people are different. They are very strange sometimes. You know, they are very noisy sometimes. And you really have to leave, love, love them. If you love them, you, you can be the CEO, really CEO who can visioning and drive people behind you. So when you become the, became that person, so then finally you can get that position. And until you understand that, you can fight for that position, I don't know how many times. But people who is choosing you for that position, who will, you know, interview hundreds, thousands of people to find their CEO of certain company, they will find the person who is really are looking for the people. They're mainly looking on that, uh, on that functionality, on that competence, on that uh, possibility. So that's um, probably I uh, answer all your questions. Yes. So try to <laughs> <laughs> somehow <laughs> skip. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Nadia, you touched this uh, topic during your presentation about values and mm -hmm. how they're uh, important. So can you tell please uh, which values and personal qualities a person should possess to be a part of your 
opportunity. Uh, very good question, and you know, <coughs> uh, that's a very interesting point about to be my team in my life or to be the team in the company because it's a different teams. Yes, so you you usually have a very close round of people around you. That's the people where you can. Uh, drive whatever challenges you have in your life. So yes, that's a, your very close round of people who uh, probably that's a people which I mentioned previously where you decided that in any case you are ready to drive them together with you. Even if they lost in some competence and some possibilities, you will drive them. Another group of people, it's about your team. And they are why it is they a little bit different uh, circles? Because different companies are including different values. And uh, when you're coming to the companies, uh, of course, you as the CEO has to check your values with the values of company. It will not be 100% match. It is not possible that the company where you will come will be 100% match with your values because this company is built based on the values of the owners, not based, based on the values of the team and values of the CEO of yours values. So it will, will be values of your owners. But it has to be no contradiction. So some values will be fully your. It is also, for example, for me, it's a company who has to drive something new, innovative company, who is, you know, passioning for the uh, helping others, who is the uh, um, working with the technology, who is, you know, maintaining, you know, some uh, challenging projects. Uh, so something, you know, dynamic company. For me, this is a cr crucial point. But for example, with Mway, so one of the uh, uh, difference values, which first of all, first three years I can survive with them, but after three years I decided to leave that company. Uh, it was with the uh, orientation on the uh, uh, inside of company or outside of the company. So Mway is a family-based business, and of course they are mainly uh, interesting in the developing their closed society. So they have their distributors, they have FMCG business, they are not interested in connecting that FMCG business with other businesses. For me, one of the values for me is the non-limited company. So that's a company who, who is not depending on the type of industry, can partner partnering with any kind of other businesses. Yes, mm -hmm. for MVA that's not, not the case. And in that case, for a certain period of time, I decided, no, for me, this is already a contradiction of the values. So that's why just to answering your questions short, uh, depends on the time, how long you play to stay with the companies. Until you don't have a contradiction, you can work with that companies. If uh, you're talking about my team, so for my team, I'm interested in completely different uh, uh, personality. So I don't like that in my team will be uh, very similar people. I like very big difference in the people. So in my team now it's uh, six different uh, nationalities working. And, um, you know, and uh, uh, but they have to be open for the discussion. They have to speak. They cannot, you know, say and when everybody already agreed and 90% of people left the room and they said, I disagree. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> completely not my way of <laughs> measurement. And uh, the people who is uh, constantly idea generator. So probably their idea is stupid. And they know that uh, everybody thinks that this idea is stupid. Sometimes my idea is stupid, but they are talking. They, they are volume. We can hear them about that, uh, that ideas. And of course, these people is usually getting the people, getting the others people. Even if it is very tough, so they said first people, then us. Uh, you know, in my family, coming back to the military, so my grandfather, he said that the, he was the captain of very, very big uh, story, and he said that captain is coming to the mill last. And he last are uh, leaving the, the, the ship. So, and in that case, I don't like when the, you know, leaders are standing in front of, uh, you know, queue when the shashlik is starting. You know, you <laughs> see that some kind of leaders. And especially, you know, a, a lot of like, uh, people who is like uh, kissing that leaders or respecting uh, type of that people, you know, they are usually coming with the separate uh, uh, plate to that leader and say, this is the nice for you. This is a special table for you. So that's what I don't like in my team because, you know, each person not depends on which level he's in the team. Uh, his level only depends on his experience. It is not about his capabilities. It is only about his experience. If I'm today 18 years old, of course I cannot be now the CEO. Probably I can. 
if I have completely interesting idea. But for example, in Microsoft, probably it is very tough to be 18. If I have previously five years experience, probably I can be. But if I don't have experience, I cannot be on the top position. But I can be with the very great potential to be the number one in that company and to demonstrate that identity. So if I have a person who can demonstrate that identity, so I don't like to have a leader who will stop that identity to be demonstrated. That's mm -hmm. what I can say from that. Does Microsoft need lobbyists? Wait, just one second, wait for the microphone, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Technical. Does, <laughs> does Microsoft need lobbyists in government and uh, do you have communication to previous CEO uh, Shipkiv? Mm -hmm. Strong questions. <laughs> Ukrainian reality. Um, I know. Okay, let's uh, uh, shortly answer then explanation. Uh, yes, we communicate with Dima. We uh, never utilize him as the lobbyist, and he will never be like that because that's a compliance issues from Microsoft, and we have in our blood compliance. You know. <laughs> Yes, yes, I understand. But even even in that case, we don't like because uh, we a lot we have a lot of uh, connection uh, in uh, publicity between him and Microsoft, and uh, we would like to stop all this connection. And we don't like to demonstrate even any single point one more time to connect, you know, him and Microsoft together because that's a completely different story, a completely different, you know, responsibility and currently roles. Now coming back to the lobbyism at all. First of all, you know that lobbyism in, in Ukraine is uh, restricted. Yes, just for everybody to understand. So, and but at the same time, we have a lobbyism, which is not usually uh, naming like a lobbyism, but uh, very like a um, stone age because the lobbyism is not a professional argumentation why your law is uh, very valuable for the society. Just to give a couple of uh, uh, tons of money, and that's a lobbyism approach, you know, in Ukrainian type. But uh, so what Ukraine, uh, what Microsoft uh, did, so Microsoft uh, in all world, of course, communicate with the government regarding the reforms. And if I would like to say, yes, we are suggesting based on the best experience worldwide, uh, some kind of best action and reforms, we did this role. Based on, mainly based on request, uh, but in Ukraine, unfortunately, not based on request. So I'm the driving that agenda sometimes very pushy. Um, so that's from our point of view. Yes, we can propose some um, ideas, some directions where we can professionally be the specialist, be, be the trusted advisors. But uh, we are not working with any parliament's uh, leader, you know, to really uh, hiring them as to be our respected, you know, uh, promotion leader in front of other parties or something but like that. In the committee or in some discussion. You know, all American like companies, so for, for currently, one more time, so all kind of uh, American companies, they are working according to the compliance policies. What does it mean, compliance policies? It cannot be contradicted to the national law, international and national law. So if Ukrainian law said that it's the lobbyism is restricted, so any kind of American company can work in that way. Another possibility how we can do, how we can work in Ukraine, we can uh, demonstrate our willingness, our opinion through the associations. And you know that uh, we have in Ukraine a couple of associations for the foreign companies, it's, uh, European Business Associations, American Associ Chamber of Commerce. I'm the also member of the board Chamber of Commerce already for years. I'm the treasury last two years in, in the board. And of course, the, what is the, what does it mean? It means that associations, it's not opinion or interest of certain company. It's mainly uh, opinion of the all members of that association and uh, the recommendation from the industry leaders. So in American Chamber of Commerce currently we have more than 460 members. And when we are recommending something on the Committee of Reform, the president of American Chamber of Commerce, Andy Hunter, he's, yes, participating in that reforms and he's re reporting or promoting what the associations would like to achieve at the end of reforms. That's a role how the associations or American companies are influenced on the government through that associations. I think we have time for one more question. There was Nadezhda, my name is Tatiana. First of all, I would like to thank you a lot for all efforts you've made uh, to get this place. 
Um, I think I've got a lot of questions, <laughs> <laughs> but we're out of time. There is why I would like to ask you just two. Uh, first, my question will be uh, regarding team. Uh, I'm pretty sure that by achieving uh, a goal, it's very important to have such a strong team, uh, motivated team, that uh, uh, you, um, uh, that not even you will motivate uh, this team, but they can motivate you as well. Uh, what uh, if, for example, you have such a situation when uh, you got a part of motivated people and other part are not motivated or you are not very good in communication with them? So it's like a war in a work. Mm -hmm. And this is like first question. And second question will be, uh, we, you were talking about um, uh, the situation when you are not ready to get a uh, high position and uh, you think that you need some, uh, maybe you uh, need some experience, maybe you got not so much knowledge uh, to take this uh, responsibility, you know. But you understand that uh, this will be a perfect chance for your career, uh, but at the same time you will get uh, more stress. And as we all know, stress is very bad for our health and so on. And you're not, uh, and uh, you will not like to, uh, lose uh, your sleep. So, what uh, would you do in this situation? Thank you a lot. Um, okay, would like to be assured, and in, in any case, would like to say that uh, if you will have any further questions, please find me in LinkedIn. I try to to answer any kind of your questions f later on. Uh, first of all, would like to say that um, uh, regarding non-motivated people, so. Um, it is the majority of people really uh, lost their energy very often. So that's why the leaders, uh, natural leaders uh, in any kind of society in average is just a three, 3.5%. 3 natural leaders who is constantly energetic, you know. Uh, so, uh, but um, you need to have, you know, um, what, what we have, uh, first of all, uh, even if you think that organization is working in agile style or in scrum style, so suddenly some project is coming on, some ideas is, uh, is driving, so a lot of, you know, new energy is coming from the uh, uh, enterprises. First of all, what this uh, business did, they did operational excellence. They are writing all kinds of processes, they automated majority of these processes, they optimize way of working. Why they did it? Because they would like to take away stress from the people, you know, that the motivation will not be dropped by their inefficiency, inefficiency within their operational daily job. And that's the first point what I would like to do with the people if they are not motivating. First of all, I'm coming to them and asking two questions. Is it the ethical questions? Because I have a bad relationship with somebody. Yes, I have some kind of, or I have something happen at home. Or I have operational inefficiency. Usually, this is the two critical point what is happening when I lost the motivation. If it is operational inefficiency, I have a management, I have a team, I have a dream, everything will be done. If I have, have it an ethical question, then it's a question of the manager. If I'm the direct manager of that person, this is my job to help that person. If it is the family personal issue, I, I preferably recommend to that person first fix his per her his personal issues and then come to work. If this is the relationship question, I try to coach them, you know, or to mentoring them how to manage all this relationship further. And in that case, I would like to recommend all of you. If you would like really to build a career, especially career path up, you need to have a three type of people around you. Coacher, good trainer who probably don't understand anything in your business, anything in your career, but he is very unstressy person, positive person, who is knowing how to ask proper questions, right questions. Second person, it's a mentor. That's a person with a huge experience in your business, huge experience in your business. Probably not very positive, probably sometimes very tough. You can mm -hmm. remember all our professors, you know, people, all kind of, uh, like we name it, red directors. Mm -hmm. I like red directors. Yes, they are not CEO. I would like to say, but they are very professional guys, you know, with the great experience. So I saw now Motor Siege, Boguslav, 
super guy. So <laughs> the <laughs> toughest person for the team, but best mentor if you would like to really build the aircraft uh, and the engines and something like that, you know. So, and third person, uh, in American companies, it's not very popular to mentioning that person. Uh, but officially in the European companies or between friends, we are talking about these people. It's a sponsors, three people. It's the people with power, yes, who has a very great relations. Probably they are not very bright, sometimes not very intelligent, but they have a great connections. And believe me, all these three people you need. And this is, it doesn't need uh, that you will have very nice, bright uh, friendship with them, or you will be very nice, pussy cat, you know, to be the friends and love them. No, you have to be valuable for them. Then you will can maintain that connections and develop that connections. For example, if you would like to get me as a mentor, you have to understand where I'm struggling now. What kind of project I can do? Where I'm struggling? You can read it from the public speech from I, my posts, from the uh, information about the company, you know. And if you find some kind of ideas in that case and you're ready to stand close to me and together with me to help me to go through that challenge, I will be much more happy. And then I'm ready to share with you my experience, for example. If you would like to get a coacher, you have to find a very nice, uh, positive person who is uh, communicative enough, but you have to really find the time when they're in a positive mood. And if it is about the sponsor, so the sponsor, of course, that's a very top guys. And in that case, you have to be very uh, in time. Um, if you are on the very great event, so you need to utilize that possibility to contact them. So just to uh, have to, to, you know, about that elevator speech, have in your pocket elevator speech to talk about why I am as a sponsor have to sponsor you to any kind of other relationship in that nice room. <coughs> So that's why that's uh, like a success factor is what I would recommend to you from the point of how to move through the challenges further, even if today you are not ready. Yes, you need people around you, constantly need a different people around of you. With the similar people which you friend in France within the last five years. Let them be your friend, but you constantly have to grab new people around you, new knowledge, new experience, because your career mainly will be driven if you're already on the level close to CEO on the experience, not on the theoretical knowledge, on the experience and competence. And that experience can be only grabbed from the people who already go through, went through that whole experience. Great. Thank you. So uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we have to wrap it up. We could. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure we could keep talking to you all night, but thank you so thank much, Nadia. Thank, thank you for motivating thank us for all this evening. Uh, thank you all for coming. We do have, uh, like I said uh, in the beginning, we want to continue this opportunity and provide, um, you know, opportunities for women in business, for our young people in business. And so I, we have a survey. I would like to ask you to fill it out on your way uh, leaving. Tell us what, what you like about this program, what you'd like to see more of, any suggestions you have for how we can keep building it in the future. I'm really eager to hear from you and um, keep these great meetings going. So thank you all. Thank you again, Nadia, and have a great evening. Everyone. Thank you very much.